And now we'll talk about electric charge. We said that there are three types of particles that make up an atom. Protons and neutrons are in the nucleus, and then the electrons are swarming around the nucleus. Protons and electrons have electric charge, and that means that they can exert electric forces on each other. That's what the electric charge electric charge means. And there are two types of electric charge. There's positive and negative. And protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. Neutrons don't have any charge. They're said to be neutral and that's why they're named neutrons. So let's write this into the notes. A proton, and we sometimes draw that with a little plus sign on it, and just know that it is positively charged electric charge comes in two varieties, two opposite types of charge. And we see these in the real world on these particles. An electron is sometimes written with a little negative sign inside it and you should know that the electrons are negatively charged. Alright, positively charged. And then the neutron is neutral. That means it has no electric charge. Now you should also know that two objects with the same electric charge, the same type of charge, in other words two objects that are both positive or two objects that are both negative, will repel each other. So if I have two protons sitting here, they will both experience a force. They will exert a force on each other and that force will tend to push them apart. And the same thing will happen if I have two electrons next to each other. Two electrons, because they're the same charges, will repel each other. So those arrows I've drawn in red, those are forces. And it's sometimes said that like charges repel each other. And it's also true that opposite charges attract. So if you have a proton and an electron next to each other, they will be pulled together. They will both experience a force and it will be an attractive force pulling them together. Like charges repel and opposite charge like charges repel and opposite charges attract. And this force of electrical attraction or repulsion has a name. It's called the electrostatic force. Electrostatic force. And that's a term you should know. That's just the name for this force that exists in nature, that exists in the real world. Charged particles exert a force on each other and we call that force the electrostatic force. Now in some ways electrical forces are similar to gravitational forces and I'll mention a couple of similarities but it's also instructive to look at a couple of ways in which they're different. So you can write these in your notes. Similarities between gravitational and electrical forces. The first is they, they both exist in nature. In other words, in the real world, in the natural world, we see both gravitational and electrical forces. And this is simply the way the world is. And science can describe that, and we can measure these forces and compare them to each other. But as far as why these forces are there, that's not really a scientific question. That's more of a philosophical or theological question. You would say that's simply the way the world is, or that's the way God made the world. That's a, a philosophical or theological answer. Why do these forces exist? That's not a scientific question. Science typically doesn't answer the question why in that sense. But what we can say is that when we look at the real world, we see different types of forces. And these are two of them, gravitational forces and electrical forces. One other important similarity is that these forces both depend on the distance. They both depend on distance. And that means if two particles are exerting a force on each other, how strong that force is depends on how far apart they are. If they're closer together, the force is stronger. And if they're farther apart, the, forth, the force is weaker. And that's true of both gravity and electrical forces. Two masses closer together will exert more gravitational force on each other. And two charges closer together will exert a larger electrostatic force on each other. 
Now, two ways in which gravitational and electrical forces are different. Um, gravity is always present with any mass. Every object has mass. Everything that we encounter has mass. Every physical object has some mass. So every, every object is affected gravitationally. But not every object has charge. We've already mentioned the neutron, for example. A neutron doesn't have a charge. So if you put a neutron near a proton or an electron, it's not going to get pushed around. It doesn't experience any electrostatic force because it doesn't have any charge. Also, you, for example, you typically don't have any charge. You're made up of billions and billions of atoms, and there are a lot of electrons in there and a lot of protons in there, but there are approximately the same number of electrons and protons. So the negative charge from the electrons is mathematically canceled out by the positive charge. I'm sorry, the, the negative charge from the electrons is mathematically canceled out from the positive charge from the protons. So the total charge is basically zero for ordinary objects. And anything around you, the chair you're sitting in, the pencil that you're holding, all of those objects have electrons and protons, but they all have approximately the same number. So those objects are electrically neutral, so they don't experience any electrical force. So everything experiences a gravitational force, but not necessarily an electrical force. The other important difference between gravity and electricity is that gravity always attracts. Gravity is an attractive force. It always pulls things together. Gravity always attracts. The electrostatic force can either attract or repel. The electrostatic force can either attract or repel. And it attracts or repels depending on the type of charges that are interacting. Like charges will repel and opposite charges will attract.